So what makes Veritasium different? What makes it special? Well, we take the blockchain and we make it um, compatible with its original purpose, peer-to-peer -peer value transfer. You see, there's about a billion dollars a year going from venture capital funds into blockchain startups. Uh, you have more key names, uh, Blythe Masters, Digital Asset Holdings, etc. But what they're doing is they're attempting to cater to the status quo, the legacy entities. They take their back, their back office software and machinery. They're attempting to update it with the new technology. Of course, best case scenario, you get better operating, yet still centralized organizations. The middleman to the um, next level. We eliminate the middleman and we allow the clients of entities such as Morgan Stanley, Goldman, etc., to deal directly with each other. Veritasium enables autonomous networks. That's autonomy in terms of individuals having the power of transaction, assets, and value um, within their own grasp. This is the opposite of heteronymous, where a centralized authority takes control, possession, and ownership of assets and value. Okay, Google, how many banks are there worldwide? According to Quora, the U.S. has slightly less than 8,000 banks, credit unions. For the rest of the world, you could estimate it by averaging 30 banks, credit unions per country. So for 220 countries, territories, that would be 6,600. So one could assume the figure would hover close to 14,600 plus or minus 1,500 banks worldwide. Hmm, it's a lot of banks. Okay, Google, how many companies are there worldwide? According to Quora, there are 45,508 companies listed in stock exchanges around the world. These are listed companies. The number of formal unlisted companies would be a wild guess as there is no central quantified effort to build an international registry. Now, of course, it is very difficult to quantify the amount of companies um, that are not listed on an exchange. But one can use uh, fuzzy math or fairly educated guesstimates to see how many companies or corporations there are worldwide. These companies and corporations would be the customers and clients of these banks. Customers and clients in addition to the listed companies. So, if you are an investor looking for the next true unicorn backed by actual value, would you back a provider looking to sell services and infrastructure to banks, even though there may be 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 banks as potential clients, or to the clients of the banks, hundreds of millions of entities worldwide? Which do you think is the most valuable investment? How important is this? Extremely. Number one, hedge fund A can deal directly with hedge fund B, cutting out the prime brokerage services. The inputs from prime brokerage, etc., the cost inputs, are the largest costs of these businesses. You take your largest costs out, hence you have higher profits, higher profit margins. Hedge funds, pay attention. Not only are you our best strategic clients, you're also our best strategic investors. Number one. Number two, you have an entirely new business model that comes into play. Right now, the uh, big investment banks, the big prime brokerage and, um, operations are pipeline companies. Basically, they take a product, uh, they take a concept, they dump a lot of money into it, they create a product, they push that product and sell it to the end users. For prime brokerage services, that would be hedge funds, family offices, it's large investors. What Veritasium does is we create a platform, we're a platform company. We are basically the antithesis of pipeline companies. We do not create a product, so to say. We take a technology, software platform, the blockchain, and smart contracts. We create a landscape in which the end users can now create their own product 
and sell it back and forth to each other. Good examples from uh, uh, well-known um, name brands, Facebook. Facebook does not create anything. They do not sell anything that they've made or produced. Facebook creates a platform and users such as people share funny cat videos, um, weddings, birthdays, etc. And that is of interest to other end users. They create a community. This community has significant value, both to the end users and to third parties, such as advertisers. Advertisers buy the access to this community. Facebook makes a large amount of money. The end users are very happy. They pay very little, if nothing, for it. And the advertisers are happy because they have a rich pool of uh, productive uh, potential <laughs> customers and consumers. So you have traditional pipeline media companies who basically take plant equipment and capital, produce content, and they push it out to you. Then you have a true platform entity such as Facebook, which creates the actual um, ground upon which these value, transform or value transactions are conducted. Facebook as the infrastructure, the platform, can scale infinitely with much higher margins. The market agrees, the market buys Facebook significantly higher than all pipeline companies. Even the mighty retailers have fallen victim to ne the network effect of platforms versus pipeline. Very large retailers, the, world, uh, the world's most dominant retailer, or at least what used to be the world's most dominant retailer, you have Walmart, which is um, the, pre the formerly described retail, you have Target, you have several. As compared to Amazon, which has created a platform and built a network effect around this platform, the difference in performance is almost incalculable. If you look at the graph, the chart, you actually have to change the scale to compare accurately. The reason is Amazon, as a platform company, has fully embraced the network effect. Now, let's see how that works if we apply it to the financial industry. Another example of a platform company is Google. Now, Facebook as a platform company competes with pipeline companies such as traditional media, Fox News, etc. Okay, Facebook grows faster than traditional pipeline companies such as Fox. Facebook has higher margins than traditional pipeline companies such as Fox. Facebook has a much larger market cap. Think about this. Google, as probably one of the most well-known platform companies, has disintermediate media, advertising, um, with cell phones of disintermediate telecommunications or hardware manufacturers. And they're moving on to PCs, computers, etc. Google, as a platform or infrastructure company, um, has significantly outstripped by a tremendous margin all pipeline advertising companies. Google has such um, indigenous cash flow that it has spread its platform infrastructure way beyond advertising into all types of other business industries. This is a sign to come for the next major paradigm shift in finance and investment. Mark my word on this, as we will demonstrate. They do this by not necessarily creating a product, but creating a software platform of which users jump in and communicate with each other. The users create the product, and then they sell and transfer the product back and forth to each other. Google is a platform. The pipeline companies that Google has disintermediated advertising companies create ads push. The money center banks, which are the main, the primary uh, revenue and earnings driver in the financial industry, uh, have been pretty much protected in terms of uh, the paradigm shifts stemming from technology. Uh, a lot of executives have told me that they feel this is the case because of brand loyalty. That's not true in my opinion. It's a commodity that they sell. Uh, there is some brand loyalty, but the um, retail consumers um, are brand conscious. The institutions literally go price per for performance, and they are quick to leave, quick to skip, as long as they're not entangled within the grasp of the actual entity. And then you have the regulation, which is the primary reason for many bank executives to believe that they are shielded from technology and paradigm shifts. That might have been the case previously with the internet, 
But with the advent of blockchain technology and peer-to-peer -peer value exchange, you don't have to hold capital to be a financial services provider. So you can literally emulate every business function of a bank without holding any capital or employing balance sheet risk or exposing your clients to your balance sheet. This is the sea change. This is the invention of the blockchain. This is how the blockchain should be used, yet there is no major venture funded entity that is using the blockchain in such a fashion. They are simply looking to be technology pipelines. Veritasium is looking to be a technology platform in which we enable hedge funds, family offices, pension funds, any investor, even far down as far down the line as the mom and pop retail investor to exchange value peer to peer without the middleman. The middleman being money center banks, even exchanges. This is a new day and age. Now, think about the bank's value increase over time as a pipeline company. And then historically, as I gave several examples, think of Veritasium as a platform. Very, very big potential difference in addressable market and potential value and particularly in return on investment. Au revoir.